Hey everyone, this is Daniel and today is a continuation of my Power Apps Hidden Gem series and today I'm doing the 8th video. So for this video over here, my focus is these 5 new features that I want to talk about. Uh, the tooltip, virtual keyboard, drawing a single line, uh, tab index and force logoff. Um, some of these you may already be familiar with, some of them you may not be. So uh, if you look at the description in the YouTube video, I've actually provided the timestamps of each of them. So you know, you can completely fast forward and rewind back however you want, uh, but these are the five things that I'm going to talk about. So now that you have an overview of what this video covers, let's jump into the demos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off this slide deck over here, and I'm going to go open up my uh, um, Power Apps, and I'm going to jump straight into a demo. So for the sake of this one, um, I'm actually going to do a lot on, obviously, the Canvas side, uh, but I'm going to use the um, phone layout and you will see in just a minute why I'm going to do that because uh, there's a few things that I need to actually test on my phone uh, and I'll share my phone with you so I'll, I want to kind of go through all of that. All right, so first things first, when you open it up, you know what to do. Go ahead and save um, the uh, app. So I'm going to call this Hidden Gems Series 8 Video. Yeah, 8. eight. I always like to change the color because this is good, but it's just, you know, boring. So let's change it to something nice. All right, done, save, and let's jump over to the first one, which is the tooltip. Okay, so in the tooltip, let me make this a little big. Um, you, Some of you may already be familiar with this, but um, what I do is in the tooltip, I also use the hint text over there. So let me show you what that means. If I go to insert, I go to text, I go to you know, text input over here. Uh, by default, it is text input, so I'm going to take that off. Um, <clears throat> and because you can, you can always put something in. Now, let me actually show that as an example. Um, in the um, hint over here, I'll say, uh, please add your street address. All right. So by default, if I do that, you know, it appears like this. It's, it's, that's the hint that it's giving. But if I click on it, you can start typing it in, all right? This this is all easy part over here. But when I now click on it and I do a search, there's something called as tooltip. So let's find that. <clears throat> so in tooltip, there is, by default it's blank, but it really comes in handy because if I go ahead and do it over here is add street address. How this helps you is again, when I go over here, Instant, initially, you see the hint, so it's great. You know, you start typing it in, and um, you know, I would say put in one, two, three, main, and when I do main, I'm trying to look at what was it? Was it the street address? Was it the PO box? But if I take my mouse and I hover over that, um, it'll actually now tell me what the hint is. See, if you see it right there, it says add street address, and that's the tool tip that I gave. It's not the hint, that's the tool tip. That's why I find that the combination of the hint and the tooltip works really well for the end users. And most of the time, we kind of tend to forget about the tooltip, but I say use both. Add the hint, also use the tooltip, and that really comes in handy over there because it really gives the end user you know, that extra help that they need not to forget what that thing was all about. So that's one of it, all right? That was the tooltip. Second one, let's jump over to the keyboard uh, mode over there. And I'm gonna kind of stay on this one over here and now let's say for example um well let me, let me actually show you what the keyboard is all right so we're here when you come in there's something called virtual keyboard mode and it's been there it's just you may not have not used it so what happens is by default it is set to auto but if you click on it and you take out auto there's actually three options over there there's the auto and there's the numeric and there's the text so the auto uh, works most of the time but in that scenario where you want to put in, and a good scenario over here is a phone number. So I will change the hint to add your phone number just for the sake of it. But if it's a phone number that you want to add, then you don't even want to give the end users the option to um, um, even see the you know the text part of it. They just should see the numbers. That way, it just makes them you know aware that 
oh, this is the place where I only put in numerical values. I don't put in any text over there. So the best place for me to actually demo this to you is to show you it on my phone. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go and open up my lonely screen and I'm gonna go to my phone. All right, you see my <clears throat> phone over here and I had to kind of fast forward through so I can get to this place. It's getting a little settings uh, figured out. So here it is, I got the hidden gems and actually that's not the one. I'll go and search for hidden gems. All right, so do a search. So I did the hidden gems and then this one over here, hidden gems series eight, that's the one. So I'm gonna click on that and that opens up. So it's opening up and I go to next. Got it, got it. And over here, now I'm gonna do add your phone number. And when I click on the text over there, watch what happens. I do that and initially I get all of these options over here. I get both the letters and then if I click on the bottom left, I also get the numbers. That can sometimes get confusing. Uh, confusing because the end users, you know, even though you want their phone number, um, they have the options to go ahead and put in text as well. So in order to take that away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna go back to my hidden gems over here, come back here, and this one on the keyboard, I'm gonna change that <coughs> from auto. I'm gonna change that to just numeric. I'm gonna do that, come, save, publish, published it, and let's go back to the phone over here. So I'm gonna come back now, um, and in the phone, best thing is get away from it. Right there, a new version of your app is available. Tap to update now. I really like that feature. So it's getting updated. And now when I click on the add your phone, you see how these things happened over here. Um, all I see are numbers. So that to the end user knows that, hey, this is a phone number that I have to add over here. And I don't go ahead and add any letters to it. So keyboard mode is, I mean, the, the virtual keyboard mode is a really nice hidden gem that is available because then you can decide what the end users should see. And then you can also kind of focus um, and you know kind of force the end user to only put in letters or numerical values. So that was the second one, all right? Third one is drawing a single line. Now, some of you may already know this uh, because uh, if you look at the gallery, any time you actually create a new gallery, you just take a gallery and you pop it in. In fact, I'll, I'll show you that. Come over here, gallery, <clears throat> and I drop a gallery. By default, in every gallery, you actually see this um, separate over here. And that's a single line. But what exactly is that separate? And how do I get it? Because if you see, it's actually a shape. So I'll show you that little trick which is there. And it's actually pretty easy, but that's a question that I've been asked a lot. It's, and, and it's a legitimate question because I come over here to the icons and I am searching, I'm searching, I'm searching, and there is nothing. There is not a single line over here. And in fact, some of the icons are at the bottom. I was like, oh, nope, that's just an option list. Looks like three lines, but that's just an option list. Same thing on the details. So I come back over here and I don't see a single line. Workaround is use your rectangle. So I go ahead and get the rectangle down here. I make it nice and big. And then you can actually go ahead and make the height as small as you want. And see right now my height is zero over here. As you can see, it's zero. But if I go ahead and change that to say two or even one, I see a single line. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get a single line over there. Um, and you can go ahead and make, you know, do all things. Um, you, know, you can change that to a different color, uh, fill, thickness, all of this you can do over here. Um, but bottom line is this is how you get a single line over here. All right. Okay. So let's now jump over to the fourth one, which is the tab index. Now tab index is also another interesting one. Very, very useful ones for, uh, uh, you know, people who are adding a bunch of text places and you want people to use their tabs or the next over there very important feature over there so what i'm going to do is just for the sake of <clears throat> convenience i'm going to create a new screen delete actually i'll keep that screen over here what i'll do is i'll call this as text input one and i'm going to start oh yeah you got i'm going to start creating um some new tabs over here, right? 
So say I've added this one. No, actually, let's even change that to first name. First name. And you know, this might sound like I'm doing something really crazy, but I'm doing this for a reason. Um, because, um, all right, first, I'm, I'm doing the first name over here. I'm doing the last name, or actually middle name. Control C, Control V. I'll do the last name. Now, I can do uh, address street, do city, city, control C, control V, state, you know, there. Um, and then I'll, I'll just end with phone number just so that I have enough variety over here. And as you know, for the phone number, I'm going to go and do my um, tool, no, not the tooltip, but the virtual keyboard. I think I missed all, I have all of them as numeric. So anyway, that's the numeric, and that's not the key for this one. So watch this. Now, <clears throat> when I'm doing it over here, I'm going to hit the tabs, all right? So I put in, say, Dan, H, and I'm, I'm hitting the tabs, all right? I'm hitting the tabs. And it's working out pretty well. There, 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 there. Now, what happens if I've gone ahead and switched things around? All right. Say, for example, I want to move um, my phone number up first because that was a requirement that came up first. So I don't care about the address that came up about the phone number. So how do you handle that? Because watch what's going to happen. I'm putting in my name, tab, 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 and it's jumping around. Uh, right in this case it just worked but if you have it in a very specific order that you want your tabs to move there's actually something built in and it's hidden it's called tab index so watch how it is there's Dan the first one is at zero this one over here the tab index this one's tab index is also at zero you can change that so keep this one as one Keep this one as two. Keep let's switch things around. Keep this one's tab index as say three, just so I can show you what how that works. As three. Let's jump over here. Make this tab index as four. And just to play around with it, so you need you need to understand what that is. All right? So now I do there, I've clicked on it, I hit my tab. Next one, go straight over here. Because remember, this was one, two, I skipped that, I made this one three. So if I hit tab now, I should be actually going right over here to state. This is how you control the tabs over there. Now, I already showed you that by default, the Power App Studio is pretty smart, right? The phone number was down, moved it on the top, hit the tab automatically from the last name, it jumped over there. Um, so out of the box, it is pretty smart already. But if you want full control of how the tab works on the phone, then this is how you do it. You actually go ahead and um, you go to that hidden gem, which is the tab index, and put in numbers. And the number by default is zero, but if you want to control it, you've got to put in the one, because the one is the first one, and then you just go ahead and add them in the ascending order, all right? So that was the fourth hidden gem I had today, was the tab index. So let's go to the last one, which is the force log off. So the force log off is has actually been there for a while, uh, but it's one of those features where I've actually been asked a lot is that, hey, Daniel, this is a single app that I have. Um, and it's an app, you know, which is going to be given to whoever works in the office for whatever reason. And I want them to use for timestamps. The number one place I've used that button has always been timestamps. I want people to come in, click on the button, log in, and put in, and that records when they came to, to work as a timestamp. Um, also, when they leave, log in, and that also records when they've left. Number one place I've used this a lot. So, Obviously, you might have different reasons for that. Maybe people registering at an event when they first come in, or you know, um, and then uh, when they hit that submit button, it should log them off the app, and so that the next person can actually put their stuff in names in, so that way you capture um, their credentials as well. Um, so what I do is I come over here, insert, and the very common place that I've used is a button. I'm just going to call it a submit. And in submit on select, there's a function called exit. 
simple right there and it even tells you that hey uh, a boolean entry a boolean value indicating when the function should be used is what should be put in over there so over here it says logout but you don't type in logout because that's what i see a lot of people doing um, you type in logout the logout is a boolean function and boolean means what it's true and false so in this case i'm going to say exit true and i'm going to save it We'll give it a minute for it to refresh because I want to go back into showing it to you actually in my phone and you will see what happens. So I'm going to get out of my sheet. It's always a good thing to close this app, come back over here. I'm going to open up the app on my side, get out. I'm going to come back in over here, let that open. <clears throat> See my app, great. Let me just get out of Power Apps too. Hidden Gem Series 8. New version, good. Tap to update now. And there's the button. So, watch what happens. I've logged, I mean, I've already in the app, logged in as myself. Um, and I'm going to hit submit. It took me out of the app and it logged me out of the Power Apps as well. So now the next time when I log in over here, I got to do sign in. Um, and that's basically what you need is that not only do you get out of Power Apps, the app, but it kicks you out of Power Apps as well. The actual Power Apps that I have over there, it kicks me out of that. Um, and this really comes in handy because of that example which I gave you. You know, timestamps of employees coming in and going out. Anytime you want somebody you know, um, who is in the internal in the company, and you want their username and passwords, this this is basically how you do it, is you use that force log off function, uh, which is a hidden gem, and it has all of these available over here. So just as a recap of what I did, um, I went through a whole bunch of these. I we went through tooltips. The tooltips was a place to go ahead and add uh, um, the, um, the hidden text over there. I mean, uh, was the place to go ahead and add um, the functionality for um, not only, you know, as an, as an add-on to the hint, uh, hint if it gets right, you know, when you start typing and it disappears. If you just hover your mouse over there, the tooltip comes up. So that was one. Virtual keyboard, great example I showed you was with a scenario when you put in the phone number. The virtual keyboard will just then have the numerical values over there. Very great place to use that. Drawing a single line, this functionality has been there for the entire three years or, or more of Power Apps existence, but there is no option to do a single line. But the workaround is use the like, rectangle over there. Tab index was a great example I showed you. Uh, gives you the full in, the full control of how you can go ahead and switch from whichever fields that you want, the controls that you want. An example I showed you, we did first name, we did middle name, or um, and then we were able to jump in straight to the phone number. That's because um, the first name's tab, I set it as one, the tab index, and then two, and then I jumped straight to three. So you, you have full control over that. And then fa the last was the force log off. The log off you know, was the functionality for you using um, you know, uh, I mean, forcing the users that after they've submitted it, not only kicks them out of that app in Power Apps, but it logs them out of the Power Apps as well altogether. So the next time somebody comes in, they've got to put in their credentials to get in the Power Apps, and that just helps you to capture the right person and the timestamp and, and those other scenarios. So these were my five tips for today in my uh, the hidden gems, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, keep Power Apping. Thanks.